I pull, pulled up this map, and I apologize, it is difficult to see. The map in the lower right, this is the zoning map of the village. The reason that I wanted to include this map is that it does show the TIF districts. Now, I apologize, because of the different colors of the zoning districts, those are very difficult to see. I welcome all of you to go to the village's website and download the maps. Certainly, the map that uh, Joe showed you a minute ago shows the... Uh, Waukegan Road tip area, which is right in this area here. The reason that I have that map along with this map, this is a map of the school districts. These are the boundaries of District 67, which as you can see is one of the predominant districts in the village. And I just wanted to emphasize the overlap of District 67 with the Waukegan Road tip district. For all intent and purpose, the entire Waukegan Road TIF district is within School District 67 boundaries, right in right in this area. So that that is a point I wanted to emphasize to you. Oops, wrong wrong remote. There we go. So there are the boundaries when you look close up. We have two TIF districts in the village: um, the Waukegan Road district, which uh, Joe talked about. That's on this side, obviously, along the Waukegan Road spine. The other TIF district is the Lehigh Ferris TIF district with the train station, Lincoln Avenue, and some other related areas being the focal point of that. You all are aware of the changes. If you've been here for any length of time, you are aware of the changes that have gone on in this area as well as along Waukegan Road over time. There have been a lot of improvements in these areas, a lot of, a lot of the, the benefits and a lot of the reasons why these things took place is because of the assistance of TIF. Um, Joe may have referred to it before, and we'll talk about it a little bit here tonight as well. The but for test is a very important aspect. In fact, it's a required aspect of tax increment financing. Uh, you know, but for certain conditions being present, but for certain things being available, the TIF would not be available. The TIF would not work. That is required by law. Tax increment financing. So. You know, I, I call this an introduction, but you see it's, it's kind of detailed. So it is complex, but at the same time, it is fairly simple. So the concept is simple, but it, it's a little bit complex to, to try to explain it all. Essentially, TIF, for all intent and purpose, TIF is, is something that requires a joint investment of all local taxing bodies, all local taxing bodies being the village, the school districts, community college, county, park district, etc to essentially have a, a short-term investment with a long-term benefit of increased tax revenues in the future. And so I underlined the, the last point in that first paragraph. The, fund for this, the funds for this investment do not come from current revenues, but from future tax revenues not otherwise expected to occur without the TIF. Again, the but for is a huge of huge importance. These new reven revenues are generated by increased public and private investment in identified and underperforming areas. <clears throat> Moving on in this description, when a TIF district project area is created, the value of the property in the area is established as the base amount. The property taxes paid on this base amount continue to go to the various taxing bodies as they always had. You establish a base year. The, that amount keeps being generated, it keeps going, it keeps going, it keeps going. That does not change at all. What happens is, is that the incremental change in value of the property over the base is what generates the tax increment. That increment is what is used for improvements in the area. That can be a number of different things, public works projects, road repaving. In this case, there's a school benefit that Joe already outlined which, uh, which is uh, a tremendous opportunity. So the increment that is collected over time after that base year, that incremental increase, is collected into a special fund. And the com with, with that fund, the community can make those additional investments in the TIF project area or in related areas if they are associated with the TIF. In this case, it's, it's the school. The reinvestment generates additional growth in the property value, results in even more revenue growth for reinvestment. We have seen this in our um, other TIF districts. These, these districts have generated uh, significant increases in property value over time. 
they have generated increases in property value even beyond their own area. So um, uh, a, a previous associate of mine said always property values are, are certainly an important thing to, to pay attention to in a community. They are a barometer of the health of the community. So in this way, the uh, TIF program does create an important cycle for the community. It allows increased development and redevelopment in the area so that when the TIF project ends, and usually in Illinois, that's at the end of a 23-year period at maximum, all of the taxing bodies, all of the taxing bodies benefit from the new growth. There, there are websites and so forth that talk about TIF. If folks have questions later, we can certainly talk about that too. A little further to, to graphically illustrate the point, um, the tax increment, as I mentioned earlier, is again that amount above a base year that, that is established. You establish a base year, the property taxes continue to be collected at that amount, and then if you have an incremental growth over time, such as is shown in this chart with uh, these few years down the road, those are the investments that are made back into the district. Point out one key element of this paragraph, establishment of a TIF does not reduce property tax revenues available to the overlapping taxing bodies. Property taxes collected on properties in the TIF, when it's designated, continue to be distributed to all taxing districts, including schools. All taxing districts, including schools in the same manner as if the TIF did not exist. So that continues uh, during the entire life of the TIF. Moving on. Some key points, this might be a little more beneficial. And, and these are things that both Joe and I have, have mentioned already. TIF helps communities attract investment and business. It provides a revenue source for large scale public projects. And in this case, we're talking about a new school as an opportunity. So that is a large scale project. Um, technically not, not a completely new school, but we all, we all understand the intent. It is, again, a short-term investment for long-term financial gain to all taxing bodies. I talked about that, that two-word phrase, the but-for but argument. Uh, that is a requirement to fund improvements and projects. I talked about the next bullet point as well. All taxing bodies continue to receive the same tax revenues that they received before the TIF was implemented and that the TIF districts only use incremental increases in the revenues from property taxes for reinvestment in the district. Whoops. TIF benefits. The, this is a little different. These are some of the things as you look a little bit outside of kind of those maybe boring bullet points in the previous slide. TIF benefits. They allow funds and projects to stay within the control of the local community. So you know, funds that we might pay to the county uh, as property taxes or other, other outside agencies, even though they are taxing bodies, at least the funds can stay within the community for use within the community. In the case of Morton Grove, second bullet point, in the case of Morton Grove, typically the village has worked with the school districts, both District 67 and District 70 for the other, for the other TIF district on what we refer to as a revenue sharing agreement. That has been emphasized here. It is an effort on the part of the village to recognize that the increase in value over time leaves something of, uh, of a, I, I don't know what the per, right term might be, perhaps Ryan Horn can mention this later, but there is something of a gap, if you will, that, that is made up for with the revenue sharing that is done between the village and the school district. That's a, a actually, a, I think, where the village and the school districts um, actually not only talk the talk, but walk the walk as it relates to intergovernmental cooperation. It helps encourage private investment and development in the community, obviously. And it is an excellent long-term return for taxing bodies based on a shorter-term investment. Um, there have been a lot of studies done on the benefits of TIF. Uh, in terms of the, the investment to return ratio, and uh, that, that's uh, been shown to be very, very beneficial. Stronger, broader tax base with increased property values, I referred to that earlier. A stronger economic base, it does provide more of an opportunity for a variety of businesses and, and other, other things that ha ensure that we have a healthy economy in our local communities. Reinvestment of the incremental revenue in the TIF district, 
and again, there is benefits uh, around and outside of the TIF, TIF district boundaries. This, this I've seen in community after community where a healthy dif, TIF district ensures that people see this is a good place to do business as a community, this is a good place to buy a home as a community because Waukegan Road is healthy or the Lehigh Ferris area is healthy or whatever the case may be. So all of these things help benefit a community in its entirety as well as within the district.